this technology was more tailor made for healthcare than anything else in the Got past. It. it is multimodal. It can understand. Yes, large language model came in, yeah. but it is language, text, other things as well. And then that really motivated me to get back into healthcare. MRI scan for heart usually yeah. takes 30 to 90 minutes. Now we have built out this new technology, which can reduce the scan time by 83%, leveraging AI. MR scans can get better diagnosis because MR can unlock a lot more details, which was not possible in the past. So you're talking about bringing better care, increasing the access, which was not possible in the past. 97% of the data is still not used, so all your clinical decisions are made on just 3%. AI can help you understand that 97% of the data, and that way physicians can make better informed decisions. Being part of G Health and Medtech, you cannot be 80%. You yeah. cannot be 85%. Of course, you have to be because people's life is at stake. You have to be right every time, and also making sure the technology works as expected. This is a Date with Tech podcast here at the Dubai AI Festival. Um, in association with Below the Fold, Launch Foundry, and our wonderful partners Trescon, we're joined today by Parminder Bhatia, who is the Chief AI Officer at GE Healthcare. Um, you are a AI leader, uh, especially in the uh, med medical and and uh, uh, healthcare space, and you've got an incredible uh, background, um, which we'll touch upon in a moment. Um, we're going to call today's session around precision and progress. How AI can really cut through in the world of healthcare. Um, so you led innovation at Amazon, I saw, yep. and also now at GE. How do you feel the the shift has been going from an e-commerce giant and a and a cloud development giant going into the GE healthcare space? What has been the biggest change for you? Yeah. So uh, at Amazon, I was leading healthcare for a substantial <clears> time. <throat> so I've been in healthcare. Last three to four years uh, at Amazon, I was uh, leading uh, science aspects of uh, foundation models, generative AI, so capability similar to ChatGPT, right. which came from Amazon, like Bedrock. So I was working on that. But as we were working on building these technologies, it became clear that this technology was more tailor made for healthcare than anything else in the Got past. It. it is multimodal; it can understand. Yes, large language model came in, yeah. but it is language, text, other things as well. And then that really motivated me to get back into healthcare and getting into G Healthcare, which is more integrated into the workflow. Where a lot of things that we built at Amazon as cloud providers, we would wanted companies like G Healthcare to build on those things as well. So I thought this time it's the right time. Where now it's becoming AI is really commoditizing; it's becoming integrated into healthcare. So it made a right time to join G Healthcare and kind of embark on that journey. Sounds incredible. Um, what I'm keen to understand is. As the end user of the products, mm -hmm. as the patient in a in a medical environment, how does they how does that person benefit versus say the hospital? Obviously, because for me, the enterprise use case is very clear: the automation, the digitization of data, the ability to support somebody's um, prognosis. Mm -hmm. But the end user, how do you feel they benefit? So I'll, I'll give an example of one of the uh, AI technologies. So G Healthcare has uh, highest number of uh, <clears throat> FDA approved app authorizations, which are AI enabled. So one of the examples is Sonic DL. So your MRI scan for heart usually yeah. takes 30 to 90 minutes. Now we have built out this new technology, which can reduce the scan time by 83%, leveraging AI. Wow. Now what does it mean? Uh, in the past, if it was hard to bring kids into an MR machine of for course. 90 minutes, you can bring them out. Uh, patients with arrhythmia who could not sit or hold their breath now can actually get MR scans, can get better diagnosis because MR can unlock a lot more details which was not possible in the past. So you're talking about bringing better care, increasing the access which was not possible in the past. Do you think then there is an evolution of this journey that one day we'll see having these sort of capabilities at? You know, in house within everybody's domain. Do you think? Do you see that world happening and envision, envisioned as true? Yes. So, and that's where a lot of automation is going to help uh, across those different areas as well. Uh, you're going to see a lot of handheld <clears throat> devices or small devices which will make it easier. Uh, one e example, like you have these ultrasound, which is actually a handheld device. Yeah. However, it requires a lot of expertise uh, for someone to use an ultrasound to get a good quality uh, ultrasound for a heart. Let's say someone has a heart condition. Can I just mm. use a scan? No, because it requires a lot of rigors. So one of the ways in which AI can be used is like a co-pilot or a navigation 
kind of an experience? Can it provide like, hey, move a little left, move a little right. Now you have a really good diagnostic quality image. Yes. Now bringing in those technologies, that's something which we uh, built out. But that has a huge implication because now uh, folks, even with less uh, skills and mm. technicality, can use that and use that to get a really high quality image scan as well. So you're going to see a lot more of that. A lot more of virtual and remote components are starting to happen as well. So you're going to see a lot of that happening. And that's where AI is AI is best used when you don't talk about AI. And I think that's <laughs> that's that's where, so both of the technologies that I talked about, we, we don't talk about them as like, yes, this is AI. It is solving a problem. It's helping on getting the guidance. It's helping on reducing the scan time. But yes, it uses AI. You've touched on a really interesting point there. And I think it comes down to uh, trust. And what do you see is the biggest barrier of trust in terms of what you do as, a, as, a, as an innovator in your industry to help both get clinicians and patients to be part of your journey and have that faith? Yeah, because obviously, you know, AI does have its downsides and it has its, uh, you know, there's debate around it and it's kind of the ethics side, the ethical side of things. But I just want to get your thoughts on, on that, how to, how to build trust. Yeah, and I think you brought an initial question of like, how does it change for like a med tech company versus yeah. a startup or a, a technology enabler who's building these technologies. Uh, one of the things uh, being part of G Health and med tech, you cannot be 80%. You yep. cannot be 85 percent. Of course. You have to be because people's life is at stake. You have to be right every time. And also making sure the technology works as expected. So building an AI algorithm usually is 10 to 20 percent of our time. 80 percent of the time actually goes into multi-site validation. We validate that technology at multiple sites, get feedback, iterate on that before making it prime time ready in a lot of ways as well. So that increases trust because one of the things like a recon deal, which the technology I was talking about for MR, it has gone through 35 million plus scans. So it's not a technology wow. which is just out there. It has been used in real world with 35 million plus scans that's happened across the globe. So you're talking about building technologies, mm -hmm. bringing everyone into the loop, bringing physicians into the loop, bringing uh, patients into the loop so that they feel comfortable and then kind of incorporating based on that. The feedback from them, iterating on that, that becomes useful. The other area which is useful is the new technology is coming out. It's not black box. I think one of the key things for us to think through is like, it's not just, it's gonna give me, okay, patient has Alzheimer's or not. It goes into the details and provides explanation or reasoning that brings in more trust. So it's still going to be augmenting or providing inputs to the physician who will be making the last call, but now he has more insights as to why that output came out as well. Of course. And I think fundamentally it comes down to providing an enablement of, um, you know, like you say, a combination of diagnostic tech capabilities and also, you know, being able to prognose like what, what's happened next and how to deliver on how, you know, um, uh, patients aftercare for a long, long time to come and keep coming back and trusted solutions. I won't keep you too long because I know that you're a very, very busy gentleman. Um, I just had a few more questions that have actually come in from some of our listeners that I wanted to quick fire over mm -hmm. to you. What's a myth in AI healthcare that you wish more people understood? So AI is not just at the output. Like I think whenever we talk about AI, mm. it's considered at the diagnosis. Healthcare data is multimodal. 97% of the data is still not used. So all your clinical decisions are made on just 3%. AI can help you understand that 97% of the data. And that way, physicians can make better informed decisions. So I think having that insight that it's not just replacing doctors, it's automating, augmenting, and really optimizing things which are not there today in a lot of cases okay. as well. Fascinating. If you could automate a daily task in your day-to-day -day life, what would it be? Calendars. Calendars. <laughs> calendar. Uh, it has to be calendar. It's still not automated. We have seen a lot of solutions come out at Gen AI. We still see pop-ups. It's not still at the best Okay, place. okay. Maybe the Launch Foundry can help you with that. Um, what's, and finally, what's an innovation in health AI that you're, that you're really interested in that you think is going to change lives in the next 12 months? So we have heard a lot of uh, innovations or discussions around agents, agentic AI technology. Now it's becoming the next pillar of uh, like discussions. One area where agents can become really useful is to help you understand this multimodal data. Yeah. We, uh, last year we announced a, a project called as Health Companion, which uses this information to help in what we call as virtual tumor board. So usually when a patient has cancer in extreme cases, a tumor board is set up where a lot of uh, specialists, radiologists, oncologists, surgeons come together, come out with what is the best treatment option. Now a lot of those things can be streamlined in a lot of ways where physicians can get that insights even before having that meeting set up. In cancer, every day matters. And how can you bring those things together is really going to help revolutionize a lot of these things as well. 
It's been absolutely incredible talking to you. <clears throat> thank you so much for giving us those insights today. Arminda, thank you for joining us on uh, Date With Tech and hope to see you soon. Enjoy the festival. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for having Pleasure. me. You're most welcome. Thank you so, so much.